My name is Brian Cushing. I'm the program director at Locust Grove, working remotely because of the coronavirus. And uh, today I just want to kind of acknowledge that this has got people under a lot of stress in a lot of different ways. Uh, Sometimes ways that you might not even realize until you turn around and realize that you're kind of spent and and worn out. So I've been thinking about uh, the different ways that history can kind of help us through this sanely, maybe help us have a little bit of fun. And uh, there are, you know, there's perspectives that you can get from analogous situations from the past. There's there's wonderful reading that you can immerse yourself in uh, and kind of get your mind in a different place. But what I really want to talk about today is the benefits that I have found in general, especially in a situation like this, of learning and practicing non-mechanized historic skills. I'm talking about the things that you do uh, with your own two hands that without the aid of electricity or gas or, or machinery in general. And that could take a lot of different forms. It could be types of cooking, it could be gardening, it could be woodworking. What I've been doing is is hand sewing. These are my projects, I'll tell you about them in a little bit. Uh, but pretty much every free moment I've had, I've, I've been working on these projects. And, and what I find is that it, it gets your mind into kind of a, a slower pace, into a rhythm. You can start to see progress on a thing that you're doing uh, with, uh, with, with your with your hands in the end it just kind of it's it's more the it's more what it does for your mind that's the benefit even than the the finished product so a lot of times for me i know i'll be i'll be working on the computer i've got information flying at me from all different directions a million miles an hour and i step away and start to do a thing like this and sometimes it's almost like you feel your stress peak a little bit as your brain almost starts to feel withdrawal from that constant stimulation and then kind of settle out into this nice natural rhythm and allows you to go to a different place for a while that can leave you feeling very refreshed i've found so like i said there's there's lots of different things out there that you can do a lot of different things here on youtube manuals you can find skills you can learn and and take your time and it's it's not about the speed it, it takes the time it takes so just take the time to work through it it doesn't have to be fancy what I'm working on here are some historic projects. Uh, I do enjoy the, the different historic tools. This is uh, this is some natural linen thread, which I find to be the nicest to stitch with personally. I just like the texture. I like the way it works with the fabric. Uh, and I'll put some links down below of places where you can shop for this uh, kind of historically accurate uh, sewing material but it doesn't you don't have to go that route uh you don't have to have a a a complicated project or anything like that grocery stores which are open right now a lot of times you can find basic thread okay just get you started this is just some cheap polyester spool of thread i had sitting in an old sewing kit you can find sewing needles little snips for your thread Uh, you don't even have to be making a garment get yourself a bunch of scraps of cloth like this okay piece them together into into a quilt or something of that na- nature anything that will allow you to kind of get your mind into that natural human flow and allow you to see a result as you work through it will really help you out during this time so first of all i do want to acknowledge that getting started hand sewing can be intimidating it can be scary i consider myself a relative newcomer to the table uh, of hand sewing i was scared of it for a long time i thought it was something that only extra special reenactors could do Um, and it turns out though that this is just like any other old skill this is a skill that human beings came up with and human beings mastered and we're human beings too and we can do the same if we work through it and we pay attention to detail and just kind of take it slow and, and keep at it and learn from our mistakes. Uh, so, and, and also found that I enjoy it on another level and I do it at times where I would not be working on the sewing machine. And the reason is exactly what I was explaining about the place it takes your mind to. And you just got to do it to, uh, to really comprehend it, I think. So, first thing you got to do, of course, is, is learn some stitches. Whether you're wanting to put some clothes together, whether you're wanting to grab some scraps and and make yourself a quilt or or whatever Uh, and so there's some great resources out there for that much better than me and so I'm just going to kind of recommend them to you. I'm going to put a link down in the description uh, to our friends at Burnley and Trowbridge their YouTube series. They have some uh, some great videos on all kinds of different kinds of stitches that you can do some other resources that you might think about there's some really there's there's some specifically really great historic 
clothing pattern companies out there that include but basic guides to to all the stitches you'll need to get started in every one of their patterns and so you can pick up one of any of these um, there's Canix Corner Past Patterns and Fig Leaf Patterns okay uh, and this one actually this particular pattern hasn't even come out yet we're very excited about it this is a pattern that Mackenzie Schultz made from a gown in the Locust Grove collection so be watching for this but in the meantime get any of her patterns they're all fantastic top of the line and they'll they'll show you all the stitches you need to know the project that I've been working on what I've been spending my free time on during this whole pandemic thing uh, are a couple of shirts now, Locust Grove, our core interpretation is 1809 to 1822. I'm going to tell you, though, when I go home at night, I get crazy, and I move to 1840. All right? So I just wanted to be sure. I was really interested in recreating kind of a, an ensemble to as if I'm cresting into the 1840s. And so first thing you got to do is make yourself some shirts. Uh, these are going to be uh, work shirts. And uh, there's a couple of different sources that I use to, to come up with what I'm doing here. One, you can find this on Amazon. This is an, a reprint of the 1838 Workwoman's Guide. And it is a treasure trove of information about all sorts of domestic sewing uh, in 1838. And they weren't using sewing machines yet, so it was all hand-stitched stuff. Uh, and a shirt is something that women often stitched at home for the, for the men in their lives. And so what I did was I went to page 136. She's got a diagram of how you make a, uh, how you make a, a working shirt different tables of figures and descriptions and all of that and so this this went a long way to kind of get me where I needed to go but when you're doing research like this whether it's about clothing or anything else you want to balance that out with other kinds of sources so here's the directions here's the theory all right and and this is a woman who, who didn't know how to sew and so she she knows what she's talking about I wanted to compare this though to how did it pan out in the physical world how did this pan out for people uh, in real life and so I wanted to look at some examples and a great book with some of those is called Thoughts on Men's Shirts by William Brown the third I don't know how many times I've been through this book and I imagine I will wear it out and have to get another copy before I die but shirts five and six are uh, kind of close to what this is, is trying to, what the workwoman's guide is trying to get you to get done. And so you can see they had, in this, they have photographs of the originals. They've got descriptions talking about the materials, and they've got diagrams with dimensions. And so I was able to take these two different sources, these two different sorts of sources, uh, and combine them to create what I think is going to be a pretty well-balanced uh, look at what just a typical man's work shirt looked like uh, and fit like and functioned like as you were cresting from the 1830s into the 1840s. So uh, I'm really excited to see uh, where that takes me. Uh, another thing is if, say, you wanted to try this shirt, but you uh, you had never, you never made a shirt before, uh, of course, the, the instructions are a little bit vague in some places because these ladies knew how to do it. Uh, in that case, uh, either of Canix Corner's shirt patterns, basically even though they're an earlier period, they go together the same way as these shirts did. Things that, that hadn't really changed yet. So if you pick up a copy of that, uh, that will also help you balance out your understanding of how these things work. So uh, that's what I'm working on uh, during my, when I, when I have spare time during this. Of course we're still working for Locust Grove, we're still trying to get some content out there, uh, but it's important to take some time to slow down get your head into a good space and try to feel refreshed. We're gonna get through it. We just gotta make it to the other end. So hang in there. We're gonna keep on sending content out to you and we're really looking forward to seeing you back on site when we get reopened as soon as we can. So we'll talk to you next time.